Hey, this is Aaron Rubinowitz for CreativeCow.net. I'm going to ask you to forgive my voice. I just got back from NAB in Las Vegas, and I have a bit of a cold. Anyway, lately I've been asked about null objects a lot, and since they're a pretty important fundamental of After Effects animation, I thought it prudent to make an entire podcast explaining what they are and showing you a few examples of what they can do. If you aren't familiar with null objects and their uses, you may be a bit surprised when you first add them into your composition by choosing Layer, New, Null Object. The first thing you'll see is that you don't see anything at all other than the square-shaped outline of the null. The fact is that null objects are invisible, don't do anything when visual effects are added to them, and while they can be animated, you can't see that animation in a preview or render. So what's the point? If you can't see them and can't really animate them, why are they even there? Well, in my opinion, null objects are one of After Effects' greatest tools. If After Effects was a movie production company and the layers were actors, then null objects would be, well, they'd be you and me, the animator, or as I like to think of it, the unsung hero of the film and broadcast industry. Yeah, that's right. We may sit in dark rooms in front of a computer all day and nobody may ever see us, but we make things look good. Don't mess with us. Wow, did I just lose my train of thought or what? Okay, uh, null objects and what they're used for, right? So, let's look at a few examples of how a null object can be used in your projects. First off, at their most basic, nulls can be used for parenting in animation. Just in case you aren't aware, the parenting column may be hidden. You can find it by right-clicking on any of the columns in the timeline, and from the columns pop-up, choose the option called Parent. Parenting allows you to control layers by making them children of other layers. If the parent layer moves, the child moves with it. If the parent layer scales, the child scales with it too. You know, rather than explaining parenting, let me just show you how it works. Normally, if I have a bunch of rectangles like this, and I want them to rotate around the center of my composition, I'd either have to animate their position and rotations individually, or I could select them all and make them the child of this null object, and then animate the rotation of the null object, which would affect them all. And since layers move relative to their parent, they will rotate around the center point. If you look at the values for their position and rotation properties, you'll see that they themselves are not moving or rotating. The parent, our null, is doing the rotating and our squares are along for the ride. Now you can also use null objects as parents for layers that are already animated. For example, in this project I have several dots that have their position animated. If I want to pull them all off of the screen at once, I might have a tough time because I'd have to work in that left to right animation into their current animation keyframes. But with null objects, this is a breeze. Using the parenting pick whip, I can make them the child of a null and then animate the null moving off, in which case they will all follow but still keeping their own animation. In this case, the null object is functioning like one of those people movers at the airport or on the Jetsons. Something I use nulls for a lot is shrinking down animation. In this project, I have a bunch of layers that are animated over the entire composition. But if I wanted to make the entire thing smaller and move it into the corner of the screen, I can make these layers the child of a null and then scale down the null object to say, I don't know, 20% and then move the null into the corner of the screen. Now, granted, you can do this sort of thing with nesting and pre-composing as I covered in another podcast, but it's another option for you, and you may find that in a pinch, when nesting and pre-composing won't work for you, and there are reasons that that can happen, this method just might save the day. Another use for null objects is adding expression controls to them, and then linking the properties of other layers to those controls. I've covered this in depth in my Expression Controls trilogy, so feel free to watch those podcasts for more information. Finally, another great use for null objects is working with the camera. There are actually a bunch of ways that you can use nulls to improve working with the camera, and I'm not going to cover them here, but one way which will make things significantly easier is to use a null object to control the point of interest. The reason that you would do this as opposed to just using the point of interest itself is that the point of interest for a camera can't be seen in the camera view. And when you're working in a different view, the camera's point of interest disappears when the camera is not selected. So if you select another layer and then want to adjust the point of interest, you have to first select the camera in the timeline before you can do that. But here's how a null can make things better. 
Make the Null 3D by activating its 3D switch. Then, Alt-click on the Point of Interest Property Stopwatch to create an expression. And then, using the expression Pick Whip, link the Point of Interest Position property to the Null's Position property. Now, you can use it to control the Point of Interest. Even if you deselect the camera layer, you can grab hold of the Null object and animate it with no fuss. Now, the camera will rotate to follow the Null because it's the parent of its Point of Interest, which controls camera rotation. And because we can see the null, we always have a good idea of where the camera's point of interest is sitting in the composition, even when the camera is not selected, meaning we can always see what the camera is pointed at because we know where its point of interest is located. Even better, you can now see your point of interest, or rather the null that controls it, in the camera view. That means that you can directly manipulate the point of interest, making it easier to control your camera's rotation in the camera view. So in short, Null objects are a crucial tool in creating animation in After Effects. Like us animators and visual effects artists, they are the invisible backbone that holds things together and makes everything look better when no one else can. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net.